the top five most affordable cities in the U.S. 2022. Let's go. Welcome back, Alex Beltran with the yearly list of most affordable places in the US to live. I know what you're thinking, not another list that I can just simply Google and quickly review in fractions of a second. Well, the difference is I've been to each and every single one of these cities, so I won't be giving you a generic list that I found online. Some of these cities I've made vlogs about, other ones I really didn't have time to do so. All the vlogs will be linked in the description down below. By the way, if you Google what is the cheapest city to live in the US, uh, Google claims it's Kalamazoo, Michigan. So if a college town is your thing, then by all means. As always, I don't necessarily go with the rock bottom prices because let's face it, there's a difference between cheap and value. I take into account the Alex Beltran secret sauce, which I will share with you right here, right now. Here are the key ingredients to the Alex Beltran secret sauce. Number one, travel ability. Is it easy to get to and from the cities? Things like accessible highways, great airports, etc. Attractions and career opportunities, which I consider to be one in the same. Is there a reason to be or not to be in a particular city? Because that allows for short-term and long-term housing needs. Number three, value. What exactly are you getting for your money? And number four, growth. Will your investment or your home purchase grow? All this is something that I look into when trying to choose a great place to invest in real estate, but I also try to imagine myself living there as well. Even the weather, which believe me, I am a spoiled Los Angelino, so if I can put up with the local weather patterns in these particular cities, then believe me, so, can you. But I do have a huge humidity bias. I hate humidity with a passion, which is why, unfortunately, any city in Florida does not make this list. Now, I know that Florida is a great place to start a business. It has very favorable tax rates, but I can't do that humid Florida heat, man. It's brutal. Anyway, onto the list. Number five, Knoxville, Tennessee. This one is a sleeper. Knoxville is such a nice city. Hell, Tennessee in general is a gorgeous sleeper state. It has incredible mountain ranges like the Smoky Mountains, a bunch of waterfalls everywhere. Tennessee, you gotta step up your tourism marketing game. I mean, unless of course you prefer staying a sleeper state. I mean, there's no doubt that Colorado is the clear winner in terms of the nicest state in the lower 48 states, but Tennessee, has to be ranked in the top five. Anyway, back to Knoxville, the city, not the jackass, where moonshine may or may not be produced and where I may or may not have had a little taste of it. It has a small town feel in what is a relatively large city and not in a creepy way like Lincoln, Nebraska. The weather in Knoxville is kind of normal. It does rain a lot and it does have the occasional snowstorm but the weather isn't extreme. The average home price in Knoxville is $280,000, which I think is a huge bargain. After looking at Knoxville real estate, I kind of think that homes there are underpriced given how much value you're getting. I mean, just the zero income tax on personal income alone makes it worth it. Now there is a one or 2% tax on interest and dividend income, but that's pretty low too. Travelability, six out of 10, because it is a three hour drive to any major city like Nashville and Hotlanta. Attractions and career opportunities, seven out of 10. I mean, it is a fairly large city and you get a lot of comfort with that. Value, 10 out of 10. Home prices here, ridiculously affordable, which is the main reason why it's on this list. And growth, seven out of 10. I do believe that Knoxville can bloom into something even bigger. With affordable homes, modest taxes, you might be looking at a winner here. Number four, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Wyoming state capital is about an hour and a half drive to Denver, Colorado. This is the perfect place for someone that wants that small town feel while still having access to a major city and international airport. Who was that philosopher that said a good man lives by a set of rules, but a great man knows when to break them? Cheyenne breaks every rule on the Alex Beltran secret sauce, yet it is still on this list. I don't know exactly why, but I've been to Cheyenne and I felt the local experience and looked at the real estate numbers. There is something untangible about Cheyenne, Wyoming. Now it does snow, but for the most part, the weather is pretty stable. Wyoming state income tax is 4%. However, in Laramie County, which is where Cheyenne is located, there's an additional 2% that is tacked on bringing you to a grand total of 6% income tax. The median home price is $331,000. Travelability, seven out of 10, very easy access to Denver and an international airport, which takes you 
anywhere your little heart desires, whether it's domestic or international. Attractions and career opportunities, three out of 10. I mean, keep in mind, it is a small town, so gotta lower your expectations just a little bit. Value, seven out of 10. The median home price is great, but there is a lack of major attractions. Growth, seven out of 10. You do have the Air Force Base, which brings in a steady amount of people. And with the exodus of people from all the coastal cities, Cheyenne's been exploding in population. Number three, Las Vegas, Nevada. Actually, more specifically, Henderson, Nevada. I think it's pretty safe to say that once you become a Las Vegas local, the one place that you try to avoid the most is the Las Vegas Strip, which is why I, along with a lot of locals, prefer Henderson. It is away from the Strip, and it's normal. If you've ever been to Las Vegas, you know what I mean. I know many people think it is way too hot to live there, but I grew up in the Mojave Desert, which is why I personally hate humidity. I love dry desert heat. I honestly believe that desert climates are the best climates to live in. It is nice and chilly in the morning, you get to work, you're in air conditioning all day, and then you get back home and it starts to cool down all over again. It's the dream. I mean, 70 degree winters, 21 Celsius for all you international folks, it's great. You know what else is great? The zero income tax for Nevada residents. Las Vegas's median home price is $379,000 and Henderson is $448,000. Once again, I'm bougie. Travelability, eight out of 10. You are a very long drive away from any major city. However, you do have the Las Vegas airport, which takes you anywhere you want to go. Attractions and career opportunities, 10 out of 10. I mean, it's Las Vegas. There is no shortage of things to do. You can be whoever you wanna be and do literally whatever you wanna do in Sin City. Oh yeah, and there, there are plenty of career opportunities there as well. Value, seven out of 10. Home prices are pretty modest given how new and how nice the neighborhoods are in Las Vegas. And growth, 11 out of 10. I mean. Has there been a period where Las Vegas isn't growing? I'm asking. This one's gonna be a little bit of a cop-out, but there's a solid tie between these three, and they just so happen to be in the same state. So I'll count them as one. By the way, this is my channel, and I get to do whatever I want. <laughs> Charlotte, Riley, and Wilmington, North Carolina. Wilmington is the coolest out of the three cities. It is a beachside town with plenty of things to do. The Iron Man 70.3 is held there. There are plenty of schools, bars, just everything really. Now, hurricane season is something that I am kind of concerned about. When I was talking to the locals, they say that they're not concerned, that the area of concern is actually about two hours north up in Emerald Isle near the Marine base. But when I was there, it was amazing. There were Dawson's Creek sightseeing tours literally everywhere, which was a show in the 90s. I mean, come on, you guys. Let's come up with something new, eh? I, don't wanna wait. I walked through the Arley Gardens, which were gorgeous, but I was mainly there to cheer on a friend that was running the Iron Man race. The seafood there, amazing. Crab cakes, oh, I personally had the pan seared tuna. Woo. I kinda wanna go back. <laughs> While I was there, it was a bit humid, but tolerable. Median home price is 315,000, which is amazing for a beachside town. Raleigh's where I stayed for a few nights because it was the one place where they had a lifetime fitness where we could keep up our uh, swimming conditioning because I'm gonna be racing an Ironman race next year or this year, 2022. <laughs> Depending on where you're watching, I guess. I really didn't get to explore Raleigh as much as I would have liked to, but we did hit downtown Cary and Apex, and Raleigh is amazing. All the houses that we were able to look at were gorgeous, and best of all, affordable. Not only do I think it is a great place to live, it's also a great place to invest, which coincidentally, Raleigh came out in my top five cities to invest in 2022 video, link down below. And lastly, Charlotte, which is worth its value with the international airport alone. It is one of the main hubs to pretty much anywhere in the world. It's actually how I got acquainted with Charlotte because I had a super long layover there and uh, gave me the ability to explore Charlotte while I was waiting in my layover. <laughs> the median home price in Charlotte is $339,000, which not bad. 
North Carolina's income tax is 5.25%. Travelability, seven out of 10 for the entire state of North Carolina. There are plenty of highways that get you anywhere quickly. There are plenty of small airports that quickly get you to the Charlotte International Airport, which, you know, once you're there, boom, Bob's your uncle and you're anywhere your heart desires. Attractions and career opportunities, eight out of 10. North Carolina is actually a sleeper when it comes to starting a business. I mean, while you're not living la vida loca like you would in other states, there are plenty of things to do. Keep in mind that the biggest YouTuber on the planet, Mr. Beast, is based out of North Carolina. We are now living in a world where you can create your own opportunities without having to go to these major hubs like New York City and Los Angeles. Value 10 out of 10, quality of life in North Carolina? Pretty freaking fantastic. Growth, seven out of 10. While I didn't see too much growth in Charlotte, there was lots of growth in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is why it came out in my top five places to invest in real estate 2022. Honorable mentions, Boise, Idaho, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Des Moines, Iowa, Wichita, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. Number one, you already know, Omaha, Nebraska. Look, I just need to get this off my chest. Nebraska needs to just get smart and move its state capital and the Husker Stadium to Omaha, Nebraska and just let Lincoln, Nebraska fall into obscurity. Lincoln, Nebraska is the most pointless city in the entire US. There, I said it. Anyway, back to Omaha where Warren Buffett lives and invests in. I mean, do I really need to say more? Oh, I do? Okay. College World Series, Olympic trials, amazing schools, which actually, side note, Nebraska happens to have the best financial literacy classes in the entire US for high school students. And look, listen, I grew up in California, which coincidentally happens to have the worst financial literacy classes in the entire US. And <laughs> believe me, it really showed in my early 20s. It's very clear that in Nebraska, financial literacy is a thing, which is why there are more millionaires per capita in Omaha, Nebraska than any other city in the US. I mean, it may be because of the influence of my best friend, Warren. Yeah, we're on a first name basis. That's how best friends roll. What you know about that? Omaha, Nebraska is considered Silicon Prairie. There are so many tech startups here. Even the large tech companies, they're all here. Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, you name it. I think everything except Twitter, but nobody likes Twitter. Epley Airfield does need to step its game up. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are a very decent airport, but there's plenty of room for improvement. And I'm sure they know it because they've been upgrading that particular airport for a while now. The weather isn't too bad. It does get hot and pretty humid, but I can put up with it um, during the winter. There are some pretty good snowstorms. However, there is no bad weather, only bad attire. Yeah, that, that's the type of bullshit that the locals will tell you when you're not from around here. <laughs> Omaha is actually a foodie city. Uh, there are so many great restaurants here. Some that you should absolutely try are V-Mertz, which is a fine dining establishment and they're constantly changing their menu. The other place that you should absolutely try is Oscars. You have to try their buffalo wings, either char buffed or double dipped in any flavor. <sighs> best wings in the city, possibly best wings in the US. And for some great dessert, coneflower ice cream, which no exaggeration is the best ice cream I've ever tasted in my entire life. And I'm a very well-traveled person. Yeah, facts. Some great areas that I highly recommend looking into are Elkhorn, Papillion, and Gretna. Nebraska income tax ranges between 2.46 to 6.84, depending on income and a variety of other factors. And the median home price is $243,000. Travelability, eight out of 10, and that's mostly because of Epley Airfield. Like I said, not a bad airport, but it could definitely use some improvement, i.e cheaper prices. Attractions and career opportunities, nine out of 10. Omaha, Nebraska is basically in the center of the US, which is why so many companies come here to set up shop in Omaha, Nebraska. And it's also one of the main reasons why it's a great place for you to start your own business here as well. Value, 10 out of 10. I honestly believe that Omaha is severely underpriced, but that's just my opinion. But also, it's really a fact. <laughs> Growth? 
10 out of 10. There are times where I'm driving around the city and I get surprised at the fact that they're breaking grounds on new development. It is great. Omaha, Nebraska is gonna be a powerhouse of a city within the next 10 years. I guarantee it. Anyway, that is my list. What did you think about it? Are there any other cities that I should look into? Are there any cities on my list that you absolutely hated? Go ahead and comment in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm gonna go on ahead and link more videos here and here. Other than that, I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.